Hi, I'm here live from CES 2020 to get the inside line. Let's head in. Hi all you robots out there. I traveled to Las Vegas this year for the 2020 Consumer Electronics Show. CES is not only a great place to check out this year's best gadgets, but also to meet up with my colleagues at the best robotics and autonomous driving companies in the world. I want to give you an inside look at my trip at CES 2020 and highlight a few companies and products I found along the way. We're going to be talking to some of the most innovative companies in the world around LiDAR, SLAM, robot-based platforms, Samsung and LG's new Robox products, and a company building an automotive-grade ROS, which of course is the robot operating system. Let's go check out my friends at Auster LiDAR. Auster is a world leader in spinning 3D LiDAR technology. Anyone that follows me knows I'm a big advocate of their technology. Unlike other spinning LiDARs in the market, what you get back out is a regular and consistent 2D array, similar to an image, that you can use traditional machine learning algorithms on directly rather than having to project them into a 3D point cloud. For an autonomous driving grade LiDAR, these are extremely affordable starting at just $3,500 for single units. While they're marketed for autonomous driving, at that price point they are very useful for a large class of indoor mobile robox applications as well. The car is outfitted with Auster LiDARs giving a full 360 degree 100 meter envelope around it. A single computer can process all of these LiDARs from the computational savings from processing the data as a 2D image rather than as a 3D point cloud. Alright, I'm going to check out my friend that says Slam for now. Slamcore is a London-based SLAM and AI company creating the next generation of out-of-the-box visual inertial SLAM products. They consist of world leaders in SLAM having created Elastic Fusion, The Brisk Feature, Connect Fusion, Mono SLAM, and more. Slamcore has an incredible team of researchers and a product-minded CEO. I expect Slamcore to be widely adopted once their products are ready for general sale. They are working on an end-to-end -end robot perception platform, fusing positioning, dense 3D mapping, segmentation detection for commercial use. If they're able to pull this off, I expect to see good things from them, and they certainly have the team to do it. I saw that Dave Crowley from Big Wheel Your Box is here. Let's go see his booth. Ubiquity Robotics builds a general, affordable, ROS-enabled robot platform to speed up commercial time-to-market education and production. Dave, the CEO, is an active member of the open source community, maintaining the ROS Raspberry Pi image in a number of hobby-grade software packages. Ubiquity's flagship product, Magni, while looking humble, boasts a 100 kilogram payload used on construction zones by Dusty Robotics and has brushless hub motors for only $1,900 retail. Ubiquity painstakingly designs their robots from the ground up to ensure real-time safety from this unassuming product. Now it's time for the Ross meetup. Let's head out. I set up a meetup for Ross users at a craft brewery in the Venetian. We had a great turnout with participants from Ubiquity Robotics, Freedom Robotics, Slamcore, Honeywell, Pitnik Consulting, and more. And that's the end of day one. First stop on day two, LG's booth. In the entrance, they had this amazing wave screen display with some incredible graphics. I'll admit, I sat in front of this for quite a few minutes just soaking it in. As you expect from the Korean tech conglomerates Samsung and LG, they had a sizable amount of their space dedicated to the latest TV and display technologies and home appliances. Off the corner, they had a smart home display featuring their Chloe, mobile, and robot arms. Their Chloe robots are seemingly just for press and not intended for sale. This is the second year in a row they've displayed them with little improvements from last year's keynote disaster. Either way, they're cool social robot concepts for hotels, retail, airport, and home. The desktop Chloe home is a mixture between the Amazon Alexa and the ill-fated Jibo. I'll admit, it's a pretty cute robot, and if someone handed it to me, I'd use it, but I'm certainly not going to pay for it. They also show off a nameless LG robot arm seen pouring coffee and moving dishes in a commercial kitchen setting. These are pretty realistic use cases for the right price. Either way, developing a UR-style cooperative robot will suit LG well in other business lines and industrial automation. I hope to see this for sale in the near future, undercutting UR's exorbitant prices. Next door to LG was the other major Korean tech giant, Samsung. Fair disclosure, I work for Samsung Research. 
Like LG, Samsung's booth was full of high-tech displays and TVs. I was marketedly impressed by the TV wall consisting of Lego-style LED building blocks to build a movie theater-sized TV at greater than 8K resolution with AI-based upsampling for standard definition content. Samsung had its own robotics efforts on display. Bali, which gained a huge amount of press this show, and Botchef, a pair of robot arms to help out in the kitchen. Bali is a personalized companion robot that understands you, follows you, and interfaces with your home IoT devices like alarms, lights, remotes, and cameras, all powered by Bixby, Samsung's voice assistant. It's a cute little robot that looks cheap enough to be the first home social robot to actually gain traction. While I don't have a lot of utility for it in my life, at the right price point, it seems like a fun toy with just enough usefulness as a remote control, voice assistant, to actually make it worthwhile. You can count on me to get my hands on one as soon as I can get it for internal beta testing. Botchef is a futuristic pair of robot arms to help out in the home kitchen, similar to LG's Chloe. These seem to be for a fun tech demo, but not intended for a commercial offering. It doesn't take an expert in robotics to spot some of the inconsistencies and issues, but still a great step in the right direction. They show it opening cabinets, operating burners, grasping and squeezing bottles, and none of those are easy feats. Apex AI is having a happy hour, let's go see what they're doing. Apex AI builds a commercial automotive grade fork of Ross, the popular robot operating system which I also happen to work on. Apex's CTO, Dae Han, comes from Bosch, Faraday Future, and knows his way around automotive safety requirements and modern robot technologies. The happy hour brought together users and developers of the AutoWare project, an open source autonomous driving framework built on ROS used by thousands of researchers and companies worldwide. And that's it for this trip to Vegas. There were thousands of other amazing companies at CES 2020, and there's no way I can cover them all. These were just the highlights from a roboticist's perspective to give you a taste of what CES 2020 had to offer. And if you liked this video, please remember to subscribe, like, and comment. This helps me spend time on the projects that you want to see. Until next time, my robot friends.